Hello and welcome to A Little Crafting. My name is Annie and this is my bi-weekly podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the last couple of weeks, which mostly consists of knitting, weaving, yarn dyeing and also sewing. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, um, please keep watching. Um, you can find me on Instagram as a underscore little underscore crafting and on Ravelry as Anki Woo. And today is the 22nd of August 2021 um, and I am recording this from Surrey in the UK which is where I live. First of all what am I wearing and that is this lovely shawl which is the Pincher Shawl by Pinpilan Wingsai and this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I've knit this one out of Malabrigo Makita in the Arco Iris colourway and that is a single ply yarn so it works quite well for shawls but not so much for anything else. Um, this is a really great shawl as a kind of single skein project so if you've got 100 grams of a fingering weight yarn you um, can easily kind of knit a decent sized shawl like this um, and it has these kind of feather effects um, so if I stand up Maybe you'll see a bit more closely. Um, so the Arco Iris colourway has loads and loads of different colours through it, um, but they are quite autumnal. Um, so obviously my favourite. Um, and yeah, you create these feathers using short rows. Um, this is a free pattern and I highly recommend it. It's not too tricky, so you kind of can just keep going with it and it's quite an enjoyable knit. Um, to show off that fabulous kind of multicolored yarn that you might have in your stash. Um, so yeah, I really, I really like this. To be honest, I don't wear it often enough. Um, it's gonna, it's one of those shawls where I kind of wrap it around almost like a cowl, um, and it's really nice kind of over a black top for um, going out, which we haven't been doing so much of due to the COVID pandemic more recently. Um, but it is lovely and warm and soft and um, a quite a good statement piece I think um, but yeah obviously just being at home not doing much I'm not going to be <laughs> wearing it so often so I thought I'd crack it out for the podcast today and show it off. So let's move on to what I've been working on over the past couple of weeks um, and the first one of those is a finished object um, and that is the Panask hat by Knox Mountain Knit Co and this one was recently released um, but given my obsession with mountains I had to buy it and make it um, so this one is I think the medium adult size which is ten what I tend to go for as I'm trying to knit 52 hats for charity this year I thought I'd go for kind of the middle ground in terms of the uh, the sizing um, and it has this lovely double kind of mountain on the outside there are three of them all the way around if I could show you that there you go um, so yeah really lovely lovely pattern um, quite straightforward to knit overall obviously you've got a section of stockinette in the center that gradually kind of becomes um, pearl stitches pearl bumps all the way up to the top and it's got a nice crown decrease as well which is a lovely spiral um, which always makes me happy when I look at it at the end <laughs> um, the yarn I have used for this one is some Erica Knight wild wool um, and that is a yarn um, which is a sustainable blend of soft wool and natural nettle um, it's an Erica Knight yarn and it's 85% wool and 15% viscose which is made out of the nettle um, you get 170 meters or 186 yards and I think it is an Aran weight yarn um, overall this color is a kind of light gray blue which is lovely um, it is actually a single ply I would say um, it's interesting in the texture that you end up with um, so if I show you that again it kind of it's not applied yarn so it doesn't kind of have a very round effect um, it's quite a loose almost a bit like roving I would say because it's that single ply um, so I probably wouldn't have used it for something like a sweater 
um, but it does have the viscose in it so it might be okay um, but yeah it's created a really interesting texture um, it is quite fluffy as a yarn goes um, which isn't my favourite thing um, as you know from if you've watched the podcast before and you've seen my arboreal sweater you know I'm not a fan of fluffy yarns um, but yeah it's turned out very nicely um, this yarn I bought a couple of years ago so I'm not sure if it's still available um, and the colour is 701 Meander um, but yeah I thought it was quite a nice yarn for me to try because it's got that kind of nettle viscose which I thought was a really interesting idea um, but on further thought I probably wouldn't knit that much with it um, I was thinking originally of making colour work but since time's gone by and um, I wanted to use something <laughs> to knit some more hats um, I thought I'd go ahead and crack it open and wind it um, so yeah that is another hat done um, and I do really like this pattern so I probably will reuse it again um, but I might it might have a very different effect on a more rounded kind of maybe a superwash merino yarn um, I imagine it will look very very different but when I've got that second one made I will show you a bit of a, a preview of the two together and how different the hats can look um, with different yarn but yeah lovely hat there all done and I've used up some more yarn that I probably wasn't going to be using for much else so that is the only finished object I have this week but I will move on to works in progress and obviously as I'm trying to knit a hat a week there's a hat on the needles already um, so to continue using up some of this Erica Knight wild wool um, I have cast on the bank head hat which is one of my staples um, as a hat especially for men um, and it is essentially a twisted rib all the way up and then a um, a four knit to one purl pattern um, with one row of all knit stitches alternating. Um, I have knit this a few times um, and it's a really nice hat, it fits my husband very well. Um, he has one in Malabrigo Rios in um, the, I can't remember what colour it is, but it's kind of like a faded blue with some gold specks. Um, and yeah it's one of my favourite hats to knit for people. Um, it is a pattern by Susie Gourlay and it is an, an Aran weight yarn pattern, Aran or worsted weight. Um, I have actually essentially run out of this yarn um, so I do have another ball of the wild wool that I will be attaching to this to continue it later on um, but I love this pattern as a simple hat to knit it's got a little bit of interest and then it's um but it's straightforward enough that you don't have to concentrate too much so you can just keep on going so it's great for when I'm playing D&D &D on a Saturday afternoon and I just need to knit and purl and that's it um obviously the twisted rip is a little bit more complicated but I really like the effect that it has on this hat um so I love doing it it's a free pattern which is fantastic so uh, do check it out if you're interested and um, I recommend that you knit it and have it as a kind of staple in your um, hat knitting collections. <laughs> um, so yeah that's where I am with that. I think it's going to be about that much extra over the top. Um, so it's more of a beanie style, it's not got a folded brim or anything although I did do a folded brim on my husband's one because he requested it just to keep his ears a bit warmer. Um, yeah, and that's it. And I am knitting this one on 3.5 millimeter needles um, with an Aran weight yarn. And you can see it looks actually quite different because of the knits primarily on the bank head and the pearls primarily on the other hat. It looks quite different even though it's the same yarn, which is interesting. Um, so yeah I'm going to use up all of that yarn and then move on to knitting something else. Next up is the top that I have been working on and not the summer one <laughs> but um, the Spring Sorrel by um, 
wool and pine designs and what I am doing is knitting it in a fade um, but I have the yoke now done um, or most of the yoke anyway so you can see this lovely kind of round uh, yoke design um, and then I am just now adding the second colour so that's this one which is a castaway DK from Stranded Dye Works in the Industrial for Kingfisher colourway um, the previous colour, so this lovely kind of turquoisey green colour, was um, uh, Rivernet's BFL DK. So this is the grey version, um, which is 100% blue faced Leicester superwash wool. Um, and the colourway was Saul's Breeze for this lovely turquoise colour. Um, so I'll just do a close-up of the patterns because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I've actually used this kind of pattern before, the kind of two double-stranded kind of V-shape pattern. Um, I used it in a hat and cowl combo which I knit for a friend of mine um, and it's really really nice and easy to knit and very very effective. Um, so I'm really excited now that I've started to knit with the next colour to see how it turns out. So you can see what I'm going to be doing is doing a fade um, and I have a an example kind of website that I found of the numbers, so the number of rows you need to do in one colour and then the other colour and how you progress that along um, that I'll link in the description below because I'm using that as a guide. Um, so you can see I've got a little bit of that colour in the bottom um, and I'll be progressively adding it until it's just all that Castaway DK um, Industrial Kingfisher colourway. I am absolutely addicted to knitting this. Um, it is so lovely to knit and just keeps you going and spurs you on. Um, so to be honest I haven't been doing much else in terms of knitting um, other than knitting on this um, one and I love the fact that I'm at the point where I have a whole round section. Um, I've tried it on but I realised I do have a few more rows to do until it's the full yoke and I separate for the sleeves. Um, what I will probably do is actually knit the sleeves before I knit the body because I want to make sure that I have enough of the second colour um, for the sleeves because that's going to be kind of it will come up to here roughly with the first colour and then it will be the second colour but I want to knit the sleeves in that second colour and I don't want to wait until I guess I finish the sweater to go back and check that I've got enough yarn for the sleeves so I thought I'd maybe do the sleeves first. Um, so what I'll do is be knitting a few rows here with the fade kind of effect and then um, doing the sleeves after that, that's my plan. The needle size I'm knitting this on is 3.25 millimetre needles, which again is probably smaller than the pattern calls for. Um, my friend actually had a genius idea. Um, so she saw, I think, a product somewhere that looked a little bit like, I'm gonna have to put my hand in front, like a double toggle um, and saw that people were using this thing for needles. Um, so she, in her genius, ordered a couple of, or a handful of double toggles online. So where you can actually, you've got two things um, to use as a needle stopper. And it's amazing. Because what you can do is when you're trying on something, for example like this, instead of putting them on like this, you can put one through there, and one through there. And then you've got it joined up like that. Should be like that. Which is great because the other needle stopper things that I have, which are the Knit Pro needle protectors, um, you have to 
stick the needles in together. You can't put one in one end and one in the other because there's no end to the other side. Um, and the trouble with that is that if you're trying something on, you're obviously, you've got that restriction um, because you've got much less movement space. Um, but here, if I do that, you've got all of that space there um, to allow you to keep that positioning right rather than having something pulling on the side like this um, that will pull your stitches. So yeah, I think that's genius. So well done <laughs> to my friend for thinking of that. Um, so I'll probably be buying a stack of these from somewhere um, to use like this. I think it's a great idea. Um, so yeah, here I am with my yoke so far. Really, really happy with it. Uh, very excited to keep going. I keep reminding myself that I have other things that I have to knit as well, <laughs> um, rather than just this. Um, but it makes for some enjoyable knitting for sure. Next up, I have my loom here. So I have been doing some weaving as well. Um, so let me hold it up like this. So this is some of my hand dyed yarn. Um, one of the colorways, the dark pink, is, is the vermilion colorway, which is a jacquard acid dye, dyed on superwash merino nylon, um, but with gold stellina in it. So it does sparkle. Um, and then I am also, using one of the speckled colourways that I dyed, which is actually over here as well. Um, this one, if I can get it close enough, um, to weave the, yeah, for the weave part. Um, so it's quite a subtle effect, but I do really like the fabric that it's making. Um, and the idea with this is that it will actually um, make fabric for a bag again because I've really enjoyed making those little bags um, so and it's a really nice way of me using up some of my hand dyed yarn too because um, I don't really know what to do with a lot of it um, I have quite a bit that I've been I've thoroughly enjoyed dyeing um, but I'm not sure what to make with that yarn um, so yeah this colorway I think is really lovely and it offsets nicely against the pink although the dark pink really does kind of overwhelm the rest but you get this lovely striping effect i show you here like stripes along the side and then kind of vertically as well with a weave it's really nice to see the effect that that has um and yeah i'm hoping to get it done fairly soon because weaving is so fast um so i'll probably have the finished uh, weave ready to show you in two weeks time. Um, the heddle that I'm using, oh, let me remind myself, it's upside down. Um, I will double check and pop it in the show notes uh, just to let you know that I'm using a specific heddle. This is a rigid heddle loom um, so it is kind of quite a simple table loom I would say um, you it's not hugely expensive mine I bought from the British Heart Foundation charity eBay actually um, for about 95 pounds I think secondhand um, I think they're about 140 pounds full price um, but to be honest if you're going to be weaving quite a lot it's well worth it and all you need is your rigid hurdle loom and some yarn and that gets you started. Um, this is an Ashford rigid heddle loom so they are made in New Zealand um, but there are others that you can buy there's thing brands like Kromsky as well where you can get looms um, but it's a super simple kind of mechanism I guess you would say um, so this is the simplest kind of loom you can get um, and it's great I love it I love it for finishing off um, leftovers of yarn and making my own things as well, making my own fabric, making scarves, it's great for. Um, so really happy that I invested in that a couple of years ago. Um, I wouldn't say I need 
a bigger loom to be honest at the moment maybe when I have a bigger house <laughs> I'll be able to buy a bigger loom um but kind of stretching it to ta proper table looms and floor looms um you need a lot more space for those types of things this one kind of fits quite nicely just up against the wall in my lounge and um makes for a lot of questions as well when people come around they they ask what it is which is lovely to kind of explain to them too um, so yeah, that is my weaving at the moment, which I realised I haven't done much of since May because that was when I made some fabric for my friend's bags, um, which I have now gifted to her. I did ask her if she can let me know what she's storing in them so that I've got an idea of what they could be for um, because my immediate thought is to go for project bags, um, but ultimately most people are not knitters <laughs> so I do wonder what else they might use them for. Next up I have been doing something quite different and that is some sewing but I've not been sewing bags I have been sewing a patchwork quilt. So this is my first ever patchwork and um, I opted to do a baby patchwork quilt first rather than trying to do a full-size adult one. Um, so I am sewing that up at the moment. Um, I wanted a lot of practice sewing straight lines. <laughs> so I thought this was a great endeavour for that. Um, and a colleague of mine is expecting in September. So I'm hoping to have it all finished for her little boy then. Um, it is very multicoloured. Um, I have chosen a couple of charmer packs to create this quilt and the pattern is Darling Pinwheels by Maple Cottage Designs on Etsy which I'll link to below. Um, so as uh, my colleague is not particularly fussed about blues for her little boy I've gone for an array of different colours for this this quilt um, and the packs the charm packs were Tarrytown by Ruby Star Society and the Free Spirit Solids charm pack um, all bought from the sewingstudio.co.uk. Um, so this is the first pinwheel square that I've managed to do. Um, so kind of a mixture of pinks and blues in there and a bit of yellow. Um, the second one is really Halloween-y and autumnal I think. So you've got purple and orange and the little houses that I absolutely love. They are adorable. Um, this is the blue and white one. Um, so you've got some tortoises and some dice, which makes sense because I know that um, my colleague is a gamer, a tabletop gamer that is, uh, like my husband and I. Um, I've got another blue one with some really pretty kind of flower pattern um, and some more dice. Another little house one with some yellow and some kind of purpley, lavendery colour, um, which I think is really cute. I love the little houses, they're adorable. Another one in kind of a pinky orange with some tortoises in on pink and some pink dice. orange and pink <laughs> this little boy is going to have a lot of pink in his quilt but I don't really mind I mean the idea is that it's a kind of rainbow I suppose okay um some blue and some burgundy on this one with again a little bit of pink and, and then finally a kind of dark blue with a bit of mint green on this one interestingly there wasn't much green actually in the overall selection um so it would just be blue and mint green i suppose a bit of turquoise here and there next up with that i need to sew some or create make some strips that will go in in between the squares of pinwheels and then sew everything up together um i've got a purple backing which i thought was quite nice um, so the strips in between I think will be white, although I might use a bit of the purple, um, I'll see. But yeah, it should be a really, really lovely baby quilt. Um, and I've really enjoyed piecing things together. Um, it's given me a lot of good practice, straight lines and also joining up points, 
you can see on this one for example the points aren't that well joined up um but hopefully it won't be noticeable and i definitely need more practice so i'll probably be making another another quilt another patchwork um later on in the year just a little reminder before i finish up the episode we do have a, a knit along going on on ravelry that is to win the spring sorrel um that i'm so not the not the actual item but the pattern that i'm currently knitting um and that ends at the end of september so september 30th um i know there have been a couple of entries already which is great to see and um i hope that you can all be kind of joining me in my spring or summer <laughs> pattern knitting um basically just do something short sleeved or sleeveless that that kind of fits with the summer spring vibe um and yeah i look forward to seeing all of the entries later on in the year um and that is everything i want to talk about so things that i've been doing in general going climbing um watching the olympics um <laughs> i talked a bit about that last time and um not much else really my life consists of working knitting and climbing <laughs> at the moment um my husband and I are probably not going to be going on any holidays specifically for the rest of the year just because we're unsure about the situation and how it's going to develop now but we are both double vaccinated now and I've had three weeks after my vaccine so I'm 100% double vaccinated which is great and very exciting. Still being fairly cautious in general so still wearing masks in shops just to kind of feel safer and also god forbid we gave covid to someone else accidentally that would be horrible so still testing and wearing masks as much as we can though it's really nice to feel a bit more relaxed um in general when going shopping when you know going climbing as well because the center gets quite busy at certain times um so avoiding busy times being sensible and that's that um that's how we're getting on with things but Today it turns out to have been quite sunny so I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time outside now um, and I need to do some work in the garden at the moment. I have, because it's been so miserable recently, I haven't done anything, I haven't trimmed anything, it's just grown and grown and grown um, because we've had so much rain so I need to do a little bit of that soon. Um, I do really enjoy gardening and I really enjoy having a lovely garden. To sit in and and kind of appreciate especially in the last year or so um so i had better get on with that um but thank you so much much for watching and please do like and subscribe and um, if you enjoy the content i'm producing i will speak to you again in a couple of weeks bye